Welcome back to the Essex Rotary channel guys and in this week's video we're talking ignition coils. Failures, original, fake, what have you got and what's the problems with them? So guys, ignition coils. Yeah, if you've um, been around the RX-8 for any period of time at all, or even if you're new, um, you've probably seen someone mention the fact that you need to check your ignition coils. Plenty of people online just borderline recommending they're changed anyway. It's a real difficult thing to know whether what you're buying is the real deal or whether you're just paying over the odds for some cheap, cheap, shonky knockoffs. Um, in this video, we're going to be going across some of the ignition coils which we've collected over the years here at the workshop, showing you how to identify real from fakes, also showing you some examples or a lot of examples of different kinds of failures we've seen on them. These are mostly coils that we've collected here over the years. We've actually put to one side because they're either an example of a, um, a particular coil which people have been buying without realising or a particular kind of weird failure that we've been seeing. Is there an ideal way of actually demonstrating why you want to be sticking with OEM or you want to be making sure you're buying original coils and not buying the cheap ones? Let's get this camera flipped round and we'll show you what you're looking for. So, ignition coils. The big question is, simply by looking at them, can you tell the difference? These ones here, all genuine. These, all fakes. Um, Unless you know what you're looking for, see this one's a giveaway, but unless you know what you're looking for, that's the aim of this video, we're gonna be showing you the telltale signs of what to look for on genuine coils versus fake coils. So to start with, we're gonna be looking at probably the dirtiest, but also possibly the most convincing one of the bunch. Um, this one, we've got no idea where it come from, apart from obviously all of the customer's car, but um, basically there's a few telltale signs on ignition coils that are gonna tell you whether um, they're original or not. So let's firstly go across this uh, cheap, shonky, what I'd call a fake as opposed to a pattern coil, but a cheap, nasty knockoff, um, and we'll be able to demonstrate some of the stuff that you wanna be looking for. So. So to start with, um, in this case, this coil, I don't know how well it's gonna come up. There we go. To start with, this coil's got what, we'd, what uh, would normally be the original um, Mazda part number on the side. However, unlike the original, which is here, this one, it looks like it's embossed. This one, when you look at it, is quite clear on a slight angle, it's quite clear that it's laser etched. So this has not actually got anything across the, or embossed in the surface. The printing is printed or laser etched on the surface with your original Mazda coil. Hopefully you can see that. There's actually some depth. If you run your, you know, run your hand across it, you'll actually feel there's some depth to the embossing. Um, we'll go across identifying some of the part numbers in a bit, um, but that's your first thing you want to be looking at. The next giveaway in some cases, this one is the material. So the, your original Mazda calls have got like a dull black stroke, slightly greyish colour to them. Whereas some copies that we come across um, are literally they're shiny black. That is fit for the bin. That is, um, yeah, not good. Um, most of these calls we've removed had had a failure of some sort, so they weren't actually working as well. Um, but yeah, that gives you a direct comparison. Fake, or copy in this case, is not branded, as it's not got master part numbers, versus the original. There's quite clearly a colour difference in them. Okay, looking across this um, pattern coil, fake coil packers, again, you look at it, it, it is quite convincing. But we'll go across, I'm gonna take the original Mazda coil now and we're gonna go across some of the things that you wanna be looking for, which we don't find on, the, on, on any of the copies. So looking at this coil, it's an original, uh, what we'd normally refer to as an original 100 marked um, part number coil pack. 
They did later put additional um, part or letters on the end of the part number. I'll show a couple of examples of those in a minute. But these are original Mazda coils. Um, some of the things we're gonna be showing you on these we've not found on any fakes up till now. Obviously things can change. So it's well worth obviously taking a, a closer look later on um, at what you've got. And we may do a follow up video if we find things are different. So obviously after we've gone across the color and the, the presence of the part number, the other thing, if we turn the coil pack up, just in the bottom here, just there, you can see, there you go, that's probably the best way of looking at it. You can see there's two numbers uh, molded into the bottom of the, um, the coil pack, just where the actual bolt, bolt down post lives. These numbers, they're not necessarily always a one and two, but take a very close, or take a close look. And um, yeah, we have found numbers on some of the other coils um, copies, but they haven't been in the same font or style. So yeah, take a look at those. Most copies don't have the numbers in them. There's also another set of numbers found in the terminal end. So where your connector is, um, similar style. And the last number you'll find is actually molded onto the shoulder there. Obviously this top does um, will rotate, so it's not always in the same place. But um, yeah, you're gonna be looking for a number on the shoulder of the, um, the end where your HT lead would normally go onto. Okay, next up guys, we've got a small remnants of what I'm assuming is the casting mark. And it is quite difficult to see on there, but there's a small raised pip. Um, that one actually may be a better coil to see on. There we go. So this small raised pip, I'm assuming, is from the, the, the original moulding when they were when they were made. Um, that pip is not present on many of the um, fake ignition coils. Quite often, we'll we'll line the, the other copies and pattern parts up in a minute. Um, but quite often, you'll actually you won't find that present on those. It's another good telltale sign that chances are what you've got is actually um, original. Okay, moving on. Um, we're talking about the sleeve here now. Um, on the original Mazda ones, this um, bush sleeve, whatever, is actually molded into the coil pack. But on the originals, you can just see there's a rust line just running through the actual um, the bush there. That's because it's actually a rolled um, it's actually a rolled sleeve as opposed to a cylinder which has been cut off. So if you find that you've got a smooth cylinder, and I'll show you this on direct comparison to a copy. So you've got the original this side with your rust line. This one you can see is like a, a cut, off, um, cut off piece of tube, which is cast. There's no, there's no seam in, in the pattern one. So if you've, got a, uh, if you've got an obvious seam in there, chances are, again, you've got an original coil. If you haven't, they're going to be fake and they're going fit for the bin. Okay, well you'll also find on some of the copies that the, the internal area of the coil where you'd normally connect your HT lead to, and in some cases the bush, um, a lot of the copies we're finding these are brass or kind of brassy gold material. Um, focus a clock there we go um, versus the original which are always a nice bright aluminium or silver color or it's another telltale sign that you've got fake original that said not all fakes fake one on this side not all fakes do have that brass um, connectors in them one of the last telltale signs and this is a little bit difficult to always tell, but you find the rubber on this section, this does remove, um, but you'll find the rubber on this section which actually holds it down. On the original, it's very stiff and quite difficult to actually remove, unless it's a, sometimes they will pop off when you're changing them if they've never come off before. Um, but this rubber um, boot, whatever you'd call it, is, not, is of a pr made of a pretty stiff material. In um, comparison, quite often on your um, pattern ones, you can see that this is a much um, softer, I'm able to deform this quite easily. Um, this is a much softer rubber. I 
Okay, next up we're talking failures, but before we go across these, stay tuned to the end of the video, and we'll show you the difference in the part numbers across the, the um, original Mazda ignition coil. We'll be able to give you a rough idea of kind of dates and ages of um, just how long they've been out. So, failures, I'm not gonna be picking on any particular ignition coil or brand on its own, but um, this is probably the worst offender we've ever seen. Um, this actually was sent through by a friend of mine. Um, he put it on his social media, actually asked him to send it because it's a great example. Um, you should be able to see there that it's got some, a bad attempt at some um, original Mazda part numbers on the side. Um, but yeah, from the look at the end, this one burnt out. It also took an engine harness with it as well. Um, not good for the customer, obviously not good for, good for the coils. Um, yeah, these fit for the bin. This one, clear potting compound, not like an original which is black, but you can see the potting compound's actually cracked at the bottom, would have been arcing out at the bottom. Um, again, um, call this fire on the car, uh, probably killed a cat. That one, good for the bin. Next, let's take a quick look. Big old crack, probably from a, for some overheating on, along the side. Um, again, like most of these we've removed, they all had coil, or they all had um, actual engine misfires. Um, you can also see there's another crack across this edge here. Okay, got some bad attempts at part numbers on the side of it. Again, bin. We've just three left now, let's check this one out. Uh, oh look, we've got some melted potting compound on the bottom of it. Um, engine misfire, These we've seen these quite a bit with um, these part number, or these markings on the side. Hopefully you can see that, I might get a zoom in. Um, but yeah, that, bin fodder. One more, again, uh, yeah, I think that should be pretty obvious what we found with that one. Uh, yeah, bin. Last but not least, um, yeah, this one wasn't quite as bad, but again, you can see the potting compound's actually broken down and started to melt out the bottom. Uh, funnily enough, engine misfire. Now, bin. So guys, finally, we're left with the good stuff. These are uh, three of the four um, original genuine Mazda ignition coils. There's been four generations over the years, um, they've started with a part number at the end, uh, which hopefully you can see on the, um, on the camera. The part number ends with just a straight 100. You can see there, the part number is N3H1, 18100. Um, these would have been the original coils which were fitted to the factory cars um, from 2002, when they'd have been um, firstly ma first manufactured. The next coil, I don't have any examples of here at the moment, but the next coil would have actually contained a letter A on the end of the part number. It would have sat snugly in the um, in the order just there. The A-spec coils were probably released from around 2006, um, when, from 2007, we find them actually uh, sitting on a lot of factory PZ, which were released around that time. Um, not long after that, around like 2007, 2008, um, do bear in mind these, date, these dates I'm giving you are rough, um, but not long after that, Mazda actually released the B-spec coils. So again, you can see I've shined this one up a little bit with a little bit of WD-40 so you can actually see the part number a bit better. But these were um, run up in, or these were um, supplied and fitted to vehicles for a number of years. These were the popular ones which a lot of, a lot of owners have changed their coils over the years for as well. These coils were then phased out and replaced by what we refer to as a C-spec coil. So the C-spec coil is the current version of the ignition coil. You might find these listed online as an upgrade. I wouldn't necessarily call them an upgrade, they're just the latest um, ignition coil. As far as failures go, these, yeah, these, um, these coils which were the originals and the A-specs, the accepted service interval is normally around sort of 30,000 miles. If you look on most um, rotary based or, or RX8 forums, that's normally the recommendation you'll find. B spec coils, which were the obviously the first, second would normally be sitting here, the third generation of the ignition coil. B spec coils, we still don't see very many failures of them. 
Um, they're still in pretty good reliable core, but we are starting to see failures as they, they're starting to age. Um, the later fourth generation, the C-spec coil here, we don't, we've not actually come across any failures, and I believe that's more down to the fact that they've not been out long enough, even though they've been out for several years now, they've not been out long enough to actually have the miles on them to find out whether they're actually outlasting the earlier specification coils. So yeah, there you have it. Hopefully um, those close-ups of the coils we've gone across will give you a good idea of what you're looking for, especially if you bought your RX-8 and you don't necessarily know what you've got on there. Um, I'll stick a link to, I think it's this side, I can never remember, or it might be this side. Um, I'll stick a link to a video of installing the original a set of um, OEM original coils, which is basically gonna give you a good idea of how to remove them and inspect what you've got. With that all said, guys, thank you very much for watching. You can find us online at essexrotary.co.uk. You'll find us on social media at Facebook, which is Essex Rotary Specialists on Facebook. You'll also find us on Instagram and Twitter at Essex Rotary. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say, guys. If you've got any comments um, or questions, stick them down there in the comment section um, and we'll do our best to answer them. We'll catch you in the next one. Welcome back to the Essex Rotary channel, guys. Why am I looking over there? Welcome back to the Essex Rotary channel, guys, and in today's video, we're talking OEM coils. Welcome back to the Essex Rotary channel, guys, and in this week's video, we're gonna be showing you how to our dinner. Welcome back to the Essex Rotary channel guys. In this week's video, we're gonna be helping you out to work.